Hello everyone and welcome to Red Dead Redemption 2. Just kidding, it's not May anymore and nor is this the beginning of interesting locations. No, this is the grand finale to the, technically, 10 part series of interesting locations. And, as this is the grand finale, I have included 12 locations. I know, I know, how can we ever top this? We can't, we'll never top this. But since this is the last interesting locations, I wanted to include as many interesting locations as I could physically find. Now, unfortunately, we weren't able to include the stone hatchet, so we might just do that on its own in the future. Anyway, let's begin. Alright gamers, let's start this off holy. The tiny church is, you guessed it, a tiny church located near the east of Lakai and the north of Saint Denis. To be perfectly precise, it's located in the Bayou Noir region, just about in the middle. The tiny church is completely separate from any other buildings, has white walls, a porch, and a small bell tower on top, which, if you shoot, it takes away honor. As you could probably tell by now, this building would be a bit of a pain to find. But if you did manage to find it, then upon entering it, you would find rows of chairs as well as a very low table with a relatively large cross and some candles on it. Near the small table, there's also a back door which is unfortunately stuck shut. This building looks like it was abandoned with leaves all over the insides and moss covering the walls, as well as paint peeling off the walls. <laughs> all there is left to wonder is who could have possibly built this? But something that is known is that the second part of the landmark of the Riches map can be found on the roof of the tiny church. Unfortunately, we couldn't exactly find it. So, let's just quickly examine the structure so we can move on to the next one. Upon examining it, John will write in his book, and I quote, found this tiny church. And that's it. That's all there is to the tiny church, so let's move on to the next one. Located north of Annisburg in the Roanoke Ridge area of New Hanover and near Monito Glade, you will find the Old World Scripts. Close to the farthest that the player can travel northeast, the Old World Script is a large rock laying in some shrubbery. The rock is engraved with some Phoenician letters in the middle, as well as an engraved serpent with runic letters and symbols, which is all surrounding the aforementioned text in the middle. The text in the middle reads, and I quote, <clears throat> We arrived by boat, beautiful land, gracious people, so we left them in peace. If read left to right, that is. Unfortunately, nobody has yet translated the runes on the serpent, but if anybody knows what they mean, then comment it and we'll pin your comment or like it or something. The rock is seemingly Nordic in origin, and may be connected to the old Viking tomb that we mentioned in the Secret Hat Locations video, which you'll see in the iCard thingy right now, or you could find in the Interesting Locations playlist. Anyway, this may also be a reference to the fact that Scandinavian Vikings were actually able to reach America during their expeditions to that warm place we all know and love. Greenland. And Iceland, too. But considering that this was back in the 10th century, they probably only saw natives. And the Phoenician writing is most likely because some people believe in a theory that Phoenician people discovered the Americas. So I mean, like, Canada and, like, the US. But I'm just gonna wrap this up now because, after all, we're not a history channel. So let's move on to the next one. Register Rock, found in the heartlands of New Hanover, is a large rock with a lot of names written on it, some of which include Jimmy Brooks, the guy that recognizes Arthur and Valentine, and is also affiliated with the strange man in some way. Man, this guy is really popping up everywhere, isn't he? Otis Miller, who was a legendary gunslinger and robber, as well as Frank Heck, also a famous gunslinger who appeared on a cigarette card and is also mentioned in books, because I definitely read those. So is that it to the Register Rock? No, it's not, because similarly to the Serpent Mound, the real-life Register Rock has quite a bit of history to it. You see, the real-life Register Rock is actually located in Idaho, where immigrants of the Oregon Trail used to carve their names into the rock. Funnily enough, the rock now has a gazebo above it, where it's on display. But enough of that, let's move on to the next location. The Jesuit Missionary is the location east of the Sea of Coronado and west of New Austin. Oh man, the amount of locations I get to explore for these videos. It's just awesome. Anyway, it's essentially just some skeletal remains. Nothing special, right? I see those all the time. This is Red Dead Redemption, come on. 
but these bones seem to be of a man who died while traveling through New Austin a very, very long time ago. If you examine him, then first of all, you get to learn, hey, it's the Jesuit missionary. But also, John writes in his book, found a poor man from a long time ago, chilled me for some reason. Anyway, judging by a letter that you can find on him, the skeleton is over a century old. The letter reads, and again, I quote, and strap in, this is a long one. <clears throat> letter to Brother Rodolfo from Cardinal Blanco. Madrid, November 24th, 1797. My dear Brother Rodolfo, thank you for your letter. Sometimes politics and the ways of the church are not as pure as perhaps you wish they were. The world is the world of men. Yes, you say, God has given it to us, but we must live in the world as it is, amongst men, some of who are very powerful and not entirely receptive to our message. Such is the king at this time, or at least so are his envoys. Perhaps my weakness is a terrible sin, and the concessions I granted them will lead me to hell, as you suggest. I'm sorry, that's a bit funny. But equally, it's possible that your pride is also perhaps a little sinful. I do not know. I have learned that we are at our most vulnerable when we judge others harshest. I beg you to reconsider your plan to leave the mission. We need your energy here, amongst men. Perhaps, as you say, God calls you from the east, as once he called the Magi. I assume that's how you pronounce it. But firstly, I would like to remind you, the Maggie, I'll just call it Maggie from now on, traveled west, and your journey from the mission is an extremely perilous one. Just like you, I believe in acts of blind faith. But, unlike you, I do not believe God wants us to be stupid. Please stay in California until I arrive next March. I implore you to show wisdom, loyalty, and humility at this profoundly difficult time for all our brotherhood in the new world, and to refrain from making this perilous and vainglorious journey alone. Our very survival depends upon it. Sincerely, Cardinal Blanco. And that's it to the letter, so if you, if you couldn't really stick with me there, uh, I'm just gonna summarize. Essentially, he says, Hey, uh, brother, what's good, homie? Uh, can you, like, not go out and probably die? Uh, to spread word of your faith of God. Yeah, that'd be cool. Okay, thanks. And uh, Rodolfo, I'm assuming, sent him a message saying, You suck, you're gonna go to hell. Um, um, yeah. It's, that's how I can summarize it. <laughs> anyway, whether Rodolfo died of starvation, dehydration, or an animal attack is unknown. But, fun fact... Arthur was able to give an entry about this in the journal, meaning that he was definitely meant to go here at some point. I guess this was before the time where the game decided, hey, we're gonna, like, take away a major location from you for a while. Anyway, that's all there is to the Jesuit missionary, and, oh my god, this is getting long, so let's just move on to the next location already. Alright, so this is a much more minor location with literally absolutely zero in-game lore, but it looks cool and it's unique, so we decided to include it. It's located in the Tall Trees region of West Elizabeth, and arriving at it, we see three small wiki-ups, which are small huts made of wood or branches, some tipped-over drums, and a log in the middle. Upon inspecting it, John draws a very rough sketch as usual. Anyway, all but one of the wiki-ups have collapsed, and around them we just see some basic rubble, a small chair, some cloth laying on the floor, and some shirts drying in the distance. Going inside the uncollapsed wiki-up, we can see a small bed-looking thing, some drums, some woven boxes, clay pots, and... Yep, that's it. Coming outside, we see nothing more. It's just three small little wiki-ups. And that's it to this location, I guess. That's about- that's all there is. So let's just move on to the next one, I guess. Alright, this next one is gonna be a clear reference when you see it, so I'll let you guess. When we first see it, that is. Anyway, if you head on down to the Roanoke Ridge area of New Hanover, then you should be able to find a large yellow house. Conveniently, just near the Serpent Mound. Which was in our last Interesting Locations video, which you'll see in the art card now. Entering through an open window, you see a giant creature that looks like a mix between a man, a bear, and a pig. Wink, wink. You get it? I'll give you some more time. A man, a bear, and a pig. 
Man Bear Pig, you get it? It's from South Park. It's Man Bear Pig from South Park. I'll put up an image on screen. It's probably going to be like two pixels, but I'll put it up. Anyway, aside from the fact that that is a really cool reference, which I really enjoy, let's actually check out this place. Upon examining it, Arthur would write down, and I thought I knew folks with strange hobbies, and John writes down, folk can be, well, real weird. You can also find multiple pages that have writing on them. Such as Experiment Notes 1, which says, August 13th, the creature is ready. The parts are currently on ice. Prepped for surgery any day now. Immensa Critura. And which, I'm no, I'm no Spanish speaker, but I think that means big creature. Another note, called Experiment 3, will say, Vulture Wing, 4 to 5 pounds. And another, called Experiment 2, will say, Bear heart, 22 ounces. I'm not sure what that was funny to me. This guy is really interested in a lot of weird stuff. And the final note we can find says experiment four. Boar sus scrofa human homo sapiens. Aside from this, there isn't much more we can find other than some random loot and some cabinets. But that's it for Man Bear. P oh, I'm sorry. I mean, the Man Made Mutant trademarked. So let's move on. The Barrel Rider is a small location in the Grizzlies East region of Amberino at the base of the Donner Falls waterfall. There lay the destroyed wooden barrel and broken corpse of Desiree La Flame, who died when trying to ride a barrel over the waterfall. But unfortunately, as we all know, physics do indeed exist, and she didn't exactly make it. The stunt is originally publicized on a poster at the Emerald Station. The poster reads, Desiree La Flame, The Woman Without Fear, Over Donner Falls. The world-famous Desiree La Flame, risking life and limb, going over the terrifying Donner Falls in a barrel. This location is probably a reference to the real-life event in which Annie Edson Taylor rode a barrel over the Niagara Falls and survived completely fine except for a small gash on her head. As well as, fun fact, a cat who also survived and was originally sent over to see if the barrel had any chance of surviving and saving the person inside. If you examined this location as Arthur, then he would write, and I quote, "...found the remains of some poor bastard woman." Tried to go over the waterfall in a barrel. Found it interesting. Sad, I guess. An even more ridiculous life than the one I led. And John would write, Found a dead body in a barrel. Some poor woman. Wonder why she did this. Glory, love, stupidity. All three. But that's all there is to the barrel rider, so let's move on to the next location. The abandoned trading post is, shockingly enough, an abandoned trading post. Located in the Roanoke Ridge area of New Hanover, near the meteorite crash site and Meteor House, you can find a small abandoned trading post. Upon examining it, Arthur will write, Thought this old trading post in Roanoke Ridge was kind of interesting. And John would write, I like this old trading post I saw out in Roanoke Ridge. This building was apparently supposed to be called the Brandywine Freight Station, judging by the massive pretty much half-destroyed sign hanging up on the roof, or Brandywine Drop Store, which apparently sold cigars, tobacco, and general goods. The building itself is pretty dilapidated and in really bad condition. Well, you know, there's not much to find out here, so let's head on inside. Heading in, we can find a completely destroyed door. Real cool as well as a removable plank, which reveals a hidden stash. But other than that, and some searchable cabinets in which you find nothing, and some chewing tobacco on a table, there's not much else to the abandoned trading post. So let's move on to the next location on the list. Alright, so since these two locations are very closely related, we'll first cover the whale bones and then the sperm whale bones. Having said that, the whale bones can be found in the Big Valley region of West Elizabeth. There you'll find a small clearing west of the Wandula Lake on top of a hill. This was most likely a whale because of the similar bone structure and gargantuan size. The reason there's even a whale this far out is because in the Pleistocene period, sea levels lowered by a lot and caused many areas to dry up, allowing land to take the water's place. 
There's also a skeleton of a sperm whale, which you can find in the Rio Bravo region of New Austin. This looks like another one of those locations where Arthur was meant to be able to visit, because he could have a written note in his journal which read, Was this a whale in the desert? And if you examine it as John, then he will write, A whale in the desert. Another thing I don't understand. But that's it for the whale and sperm whale bones, so let's move on to the next location. Have you ever wanted to visit Mount Rushmore but you hate people? Then you're in luck! Just head on down to the Grizzlies East region of Amberino, and along with a face in the mountain, you can also find a deeply depressing story of a man whose true love left him broken. If you couldn't tell, we're talking about the face in the cliff, a location by the Moonstone Pond, where if you visit, aside from the beautifully carved face in the cliff, you'll also find some wooden scaffolding nearby, as well as a body hanging off of it. If you examine it, then, well, he just draws a picture of the face in the cliff. That's, that's all there is. He doesn't actually write any notes. But if you shoot down the body and then loot it, then you will find a note which says, and I quote, Whoever finds this, I am sorry. I was worthless in life, and now I am even more so in my death. I gave my life to my art, to creating a monument, to the one that I loved, but in doing so I lost her. Great art moves very slowly, but the heart moves very quick. Now I look on her face and I see that terrible French cad, that scribbler, that second-rate smearer of colors, that crude little goat. I have been a fool, and I will die next to my monument of foolishness. As far as I can tell, the quote, French scribbler, may have meant that his true love left him for the sculptor Charles Chatenay. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but I think I did. Well, anyways, what a nice love story, Rockstar. Anyway, let's move on to the second to last location on the list. If you're taking a nice stroll right on the border between the Roanoke Ridge area of New Hanover and the Grizzlies East area of Amberino, then you just might stumble across a slightly strange looking wall. I wonder why it has such weird scarring. Anybody else notice that? And what's that thing in the- oh, it's a body. Oh my god, it is a body. I forgot we're in Red Dead. If you couldn't tell by now, I'm talking about the fossilized man, located just near the meteorite crash site, and right about near the railroad connecting the two regions. The fossilized man is a small location, which upon analyzing as Arthur, he will write, found the remains of this fella in the rock. And upon examining it as John, he will write, some guy, dead, years ago, I guess, and now in the rock. It's a very small location, and all it includes is just this ancient man fossilized in the wall. Much like the Jesuit missionary, only that was much more recent. Well, that's all there is to the fossilized man. All there is to wonder is, how long ago could this guy have been here? Man, this... I don't think this guy would exactly be stuck here over 10 years, you know? I feel like that would take a bit longer. Anyways, let's move on to the next and final location on this list. The final location on the list is the Meditating Monk. Just south of the R in Grizzlies East, you'll find a bald monk with a large gray beard sitting cross-legged, with his hands in his lap, meditating. He's most likely a Tibetan monk. He's also meditating with his eyes open, which while you little uneducated children may think is strange, but it's actually common practice with Tibetan monks. Now, unfortunately, you can't exactly interact with the monk, but disrupting his meditation or killing him takes away honor. Well, that's it. Those are all the locations that we could find interesting enough to share with you in Red Dead Redemption 2. To be honest, these last few months working on this channel have been really fun, and I'm really glad that we were able to bring back a long-forgotten series and give it a hopefully satisfying conclusion. The amount of things that have happened ever since the conclusion of the original Interesting Locations series is a lot, to say the least. But since this is the end of Interesting Locations, I give you my word that if Bed Rest Redemption- I mean, I mean, sorry, if Red Dead Redemption 3 ever comes out, then we will bring back Interesting Locations, for better or for worse. Anyways, that's about it for this video. Subscribe for our upcoming videos because we're gonna have some videos covering the Red Harlow mystery soon and some more IKZ videos probably. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Comment if you did or have any cool theories that we could also cover. Oh yeah, and also check out our Red but Mostly Dead Discord server. It's pretty epic. So the Discord's gonna be in the description at like the very bottom somewhere. Uh, go join it. We announce videos and 
give updates on the progress of our videos. And uh, yeah, that's, that's about all we do there. Also, uh, on the left, you should see a playlist for interesting locations and our most recent upload because end cards are so epic. Anyway, that's about it to this video, and we will see you next time. Goodbye.